Hi everyone, I am Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted, the video interview series that connects you with the industry's top minds. Today we're talking with Ashley Murrican, product marketing manager, Volvo Trucks North America. Ashley, how are you doing? We've had a number of your, your Volvo colleagues on here, but how are you doing specifically at home? Are you adapting okay? Everything going good with you? Yeah, yeah, so far so good, but now I'm used to working from home, yeah. Right. It's not that different from working at like a Marriott hotel, which is what I'm used to anyway. So, uh, yeah. it's weird. although I had to shave my beard, thanks, Jason. All right, <laughs> see, beards were beards were required. It's the only reason I grew this to do video to show off my cool wizard beards. Okay. Uh, well, today, other than beards, today we are also talking automated manual transmissions, right? Um, That's right. So um, automated manual transmissions have really taken over the industry. I think it's fair to say that it's probably a good portion of the Volvo truck build going on right now, a good portion of the orders, yeah. right? Um, and they've come a long way, even in the past three or four years when they started to take off. Lots of new options, lots of new uh, application-specific details. So that's what we're going to dive into. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'll just start with the first question. So if I'm a fleet manager, uh, I haven't really kept up with all the different technology going into AMTs. Uh, so what, what advice do you give me to be able to match the right AMT to the right application? Yeah, like you said, there's lots of options to choose from. I mean, there's different AMTs to choose from, different software options to choose from. It can be really uh, confusing for a fleet of what's the right one to pick. At Volvo itself, we have like three different types of transmissions. We have the iShift, 12-speed regular, then you have an ice shift 12-speed severe duty, which is for vocational applications or on off-road or even heavy line haul. Then you have uh, the ice shift crawler gears, it's a 13-speed and a 14-speed, which is again for on off-road applications. It's also for highway applications where you want to uh, push the limits of down speeding. You can also use it for heavy haul applications, so it's a really versatile uh, transmission. So the best advice I Give a fleet is um, before we, to make you make this decision easier is to understand information about your application. Use analytics to understand information about the application. Let's say, for example, uh, if you take a line haul application, right? You have the option of specking between an overdrive transmission or a direct drive transmission. So it's not just specking the AMT, it, you got to take the complete integrated powertrain into consideration. You got to spec the right combination of engine, transmission, and rear axle ratio to get the, get the right specs, gear your powertrain the right way to fall in the right uh, RPM in the sweet spot of the engine. So let's say for line haul applications, if you're, you got to understand what kind of speeds you're traveling at. What's the average cruise control speed? What's the average max speeds that you're traveling in, which states are you traveling in? What kind of terrain are you traveling in? Let's say if, you're, if you gear your transmission to travel at cruise speeds of 70 miles per hour, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you end up driving at 60 miles per hour cruise speed. Then you've geared your transmission the wrong way. You're not gonna get mm -hmm. the fuel efficiency that you were actually expecting. So understand, are you gonna be driving, let's say, only in Canada or only in California where the speed limits are 55 miles per hour, then that, that way you can easily spec a direct drive transmission. Mm -hmm. If you spec a direct drive transmission, it's more fuel efficient than an overdrive transmission, almost like 0.5% more fuel efficient. But you can work the other way around as well. You might spec a direct drive thinking that you're gonna be only driving in California, but you end up driving all over the place. You get different speeds then, an overdrive transmission is better because you get the versatility of overdrive in 12th gear and then you get direct drive in 11th gear. Right. And then even in the vocational applications, it comes in handy as well. You got to understand what percentage of time am I on the highway versus off highway? You might be on the job site for, let's say, 50% of the time, but the other 50% of the time you're on the highway. So you can actually spec um, a crawler gears, for example. To, mm -hmm startability concerns in the offside application but when you're on road with the crawler gears you can spec a faster rear axle ratio to get you fuel efficiency when you're on the highway okay okay so even heavy haul the same concept you might be hauling like really heavy loads again you can spec it with the crawler gear transmission and get when you're loaded 
you can use the crawler gear transmission to get the load moving. But when you're coming back empty, you can use the benefits of a faster rear axle ratio to save you fuel. So to understand, you gotta understand all these as aspects. What kind of, again, also what kind of GCWs are you hauling, right? You don't wanna put uh, a highway transmission which is limited to 110,000 pounds GCW in a heavy line haul application, which is 125,000 pounds, for example. So you gotta spec the right transmission for the right application. So, and also you don't wanna spec a highway transmission for a vocational application, right? Because at Volvo, we have like a nice shift severe dude reinforced internal components that are more uh, susceptible, susceptible to handle and shifting as well as okay. high viscosity oil to handle higher GCW. So again, understand what more about your application. Right. You also have options about the different types of shifters you can choose from, right? You can, you can choose a dash mounted shifter versus a seat mounted shifter. So if you let's, let's say for example, if you, spec a seat uh, a dash mounted shifter for a vocational application let's say you're in a quarry or something where you need uh, to take control of the transmission switch it to manual mode it's not favorable to have it as a dash mounted shifter you have to reach over to switch gears you might but it's better you have a seat mounted shifter so you have it right there to take control and and you know sure. switch right. gears same thing for the highway you can it's better to have a dash mounted shifter because then you have enough space to get from the driver's seat to go back, back to the cab without any. So a lot of things to consider. Right, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, oh yeah, and I really like the uh, the point about using the analytics. I was having a conversation last week too about what uh, the difference between what you think your trucks are doing and what they're actually doing. Right. I know Volvo. Volvo is steeped in the telematic side, so having visibility that is key. Right. It's key, key. So you got to really understand. I mean, where you're driving as well. You know, are you driving in hilly terrain or flat terrain? Because you spec your transmission to to uh, for maximum fuel efficiency, thinking you're going to be on flat terrain, but then you end up going on hilly terrain for 25 percent of the time. Then you're not going to get the performance that you expect on a hilly. Terrain. So a lot of stuff. Lots of customization. customization. And, and interesting that, you know, it can seem like magic, right? Because they're really smooth and they work really well. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just a box that goes there, but lots of different options there. Do me, uh, walk me through the, 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 the features of like crawler gears and severe duty, because in my mind, they were kind of one and the same, but what is, yeah. what are the benefits of each and where would I want to use them? Perfect. Great question. Yeah. So severe duty and crawler gears have the same internal characteristics. So it's got that reinforced components inside it. It's got experience mm -hmm. done to the components, so you can handle more of those frequent shifting, shifting, so it's less susceptible to wear and tear. But the difference between severe duty and crawler gears is that the crawler gears is like in this additional set of gears that's housed in between the clutch housing and the main housing. So this additional set of gears gives you such a deep reduction, and it's like, it's like you know, it gives you an overall ratio of around 41, point, 41 is to one, so that's higher, deeper reduction than most of the other transmissions that's out there. Mm -hmm. So ratio reduction gives you startability, like when you're exposed to steep grades in a quarry or anywhere on off-road. And it also gives you the capability to start hauling those really high GCW loads to get that load moving. And then another important feature is for slow speed maneuverability. So it, like for curb pouring applications, spreading, you need to go really slow. So you can go as slow as about 0.6 miles per hour, if you like. Uh -huh. Okay. That's, that's a big deal. Yeah. And it's, it's so versatile that, that you might think that crawler gears can be used only for vocational heavy hauls, but this, these crawler gears, like especially the 13 speed crawler gears, mm -hmm. can be on the highway applications as well, when you want to push the limits of down speeding. Let's say, if you spec these really aggressive rear axle ratios, like 215 rear axle ratio or a 205, there's even like 195 we offer. Oh, so, wow, okay. so when you spec those kind of rear axle ratios, yeah, you do go at really low RPMs when you're, in, when you're cruising. You compromise on startability and slow speed maneuverability. So if you spec like a 13 speed transmission with that, then you take care of startability and low speed maneuverability, like when you're backing up uh, your tractor into a trailer. You don't want to back up really fast. You got to, otherwise you'll damage equipment. 
so you get the best of both worlds so you can push the limits yeah that, that's really that's super interesting to be able to balance that it seems like a relatively uh new uh kind of innovation and option there right because that is those yes. are still relatively new options it's, yeah and uh, like we expect it's going to get more and more popular it's about educating people of what it can do, the versatility that it can offer. It's amazing. So for sure. Uh, let's go back and refresh on some of the offerings <laughs> that are still relatively new, but they've been around a little longer, I guess, right? Like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the on highway applications uh, for the uh, for the AMTs, the software control, the uh, uh, and how you how you deal with and how you optimize that for fuel efficiency or going down grades, things like that. Can you walk us through some of those features and, and where fleets would see the benefits there? Yeah, that's a very, very important question because you can't come out with a new transmission every year, right? But, <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can come up with new software features like to enhance the capabilities of the transmission, like most recently, as of Jan 1st, 2020, we introduced a new drive mode called Extra Economy. So it's a new shift calibration, basically helping you maximize fuel efficiency. So in an Extra Economy drive mode, you have a different shift logic. You have less, less horsepower in each gear. You have a less throttle response. So you got to hit the pedal farther to get a response. But it, by doing all that, you're saving more fuel. So you have an extra drive mode and then you have different drive modes that we offer at Volvo. You have extra economy, you have economy, you have performance, you have heavy duty. So depending on the environment that you're exposed to, you can access any of these drive modes. So it basically changes the shifting calibration. So let's say if okay. you're economy or extra economy, it might skip shift, it might shift at lower RPMs, but if you're in performance or a heavy duty mode, it's going to rev out the engine and give you more performance before it, before each shift. It might not skip shift. And um, then there's a heavy duty mode where it automatically recognizes that you're always 135,000 pounds and above. So then it's gonna adapt your shift logic for that kind of load. So it's gonna be more aggressive. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And then we offer uh, different software packages, which are basically a combination of these different drive modes. So it's pre-packaged for your customers. So they can pick, let's say, an extra economy software. It comes only with the extra economy drive mode, for example. So where does this come in handy? It comes in handy for those fleets who are really concerned about fuel efficiency. They want to, they don't want the driver to intervene and mess around with the transmission. They just want the driver to put it in drive and let the truck do its thing. So, so you can, you can, you can do it like that, or you can, uh, get a software package with all the different modes offer the complete flexibility for an owner operator, for example, mm -hmm. access to all of it. And you can also like, um, order different types of shifters with, 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 uh, with the plus or minus button that helps you to shift or gives you the capability to switch between drive modes, or you can also without those buttons on it. So it, so, so the so if you had the whole package, you'd be able to change the drive modes while you're in the truck, right? Exactly. With the buttons. Yes. If you don't have the buttons, is it a service instance where you have to go in and update the software to get that put in? Is that how that works? Yeah, you can. Okay. You have to switch out the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, and that's really interesting because we've been talking a lot about in the past couple months about uh, uh, over the air updates for engines and and optimizing the engine in that regard, but this is really transmission focused software programming, yes. right? You match that with the, you know, everything's paired up with the engine now, and now you can really see some saving. Oh yeah, and you can do all of this over the air. Let's say if you have one drive mode, you wanna add another drive mode, you can add it after the fact. Over on the on the transmission side as well? Yeah, yeah, you can okay. switch it over the air, boop, boop, you can just do it, and just like how you are. It's probably optimizing both, because uh, it's all connected, right? So it's optimizing engine and transmission, it's the whole control yeah. package. Oh, okay, okay, that's interesting. Um, and, uh, like so many other features, like gentle shift. Let's say if you want to limit your torque in the lower gears, like let's say you're hauling livestock or unbaffled tankers, where there's a lot of slosh effect, you want to minimize that effect. So you get you limit the torque. So it's called a gentle shift software. You can install that. So and it gives you smoother shifting, less wear and tear on your driveline components. Then let's say you're in a paving application and you don't want to press the service brake when the truck is when, when the paver is pushing the truck, you don't want to press the service brake to take off from neutral to drive. 
So you have this break interlock enable function. Instead of pressing the service break, you just press the plus button on your transmission and you can shift from neutral to drive. So it's having bumps on the road, you know. Okay, very cool. That can well, be done over the air. So. And I imagine too, I, as a fleet manager, I want to be able to communicate that to drivers, right? Because if I hop in one Volvo and then getting another one that has a different package, like you said, if you get if you have to push the pedal more to let them right. know that's a feature, not a reason to call me or to go into yeah, a service yeah, yeah, center, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely right. And that's that's our job to to let people know about it. So, yeah. yeah, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, very nice to let people know. <laughs> exactly. No, and I mean, I, I wasn't even aware of the depth of how quickly the software packages are are moving and being, uh, yeah. being available. That's amazing. And there's so many other software packages I can go on, but this interview will never get over. <laughs> well, in the important thing, wait, it just talk and talk about your uh, your needs, really look into your operations, figure out what you need, and then talk to the people that will just help you give you the options, right? Because yeah, exactly, exactly. So understand uh, what you what you're in for, and then understand your priorities. What, what are you after? Fuel efficiency? Are you after a balance of fuel efficiency and performance, or you want complete performance? And then they'll spec it accordingly. So, yeah, Very cool. Very cool. Well, Ash, always great to catch up with you. Always great yeah, to catch up. Thank you. So much to talk about. I, can't stop. I know. No, no. I know. We will definitely <laughs> get in touch with you again and talk more about this. And uh, hopefully, when this is all over, we'll get together and, and actually walk through some of these things. Uh, perfect. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for taking the time. Stay safe. Bye bye.